So we've set up our file cache and I've cached out some frames um, and we've seen you know, the sort of level of size you get quite quickly, uh, can we get quite large. Um, and before we go ahead and start tweaking this sort of little mushroom and trying to make it look a bit more like this, um, I just want to talk a little bit about the resolution of your simulation. So when Bifrost computes these simulations, it voxelizes the space around the emitter. And voxels are little cubes that fill the space and each cube holds a certain amount of data about what's going on in that area. Uh, things such as like speed and temperature and all this sort of stuff. Um, and we can visualize these by um, making a volume scope. I'm just gonna set this back to right because when it's a read it ignores all this sort of stuff and I want to start accessing it again. So I'm just going to set that back to right. So it's now evaluating this whole graph. I'm just going to rewind it back to frame one. So just going to hit tab, start typing volume, and I want a volume scope. So just having a little think. I'm just going to zoom in a bit so you can see it better. I'm just going to take the out object of this, put it into the volume. There. Let's move this over and drag that into a new output port of our output node. Um, so this is the voxelized world that is being displayed by this volume scope. So each one of these little cubes holds quite a lot of data in about, about what's going on in that little cubed area in relation to the sim. Um, and we can see some of this data. If we right click over the connection coming from the aero simulation to the file cache, we can see what it's outputting to that cache. So if I go add watch point, we'll have a little think about it and we get all this sort of data. So you can see all this sort of voxelized data that's being passed through and each one of these cubes has all this data and probably a, a lot more that's you know under the hood that we don't have access to. Um, and as you can see there's quite a lot of it and there is tells us here how many elements so how many voxels are in the scene. Uh, at the moment it's 126,400. Um, you might think that that doesn't look like that much there, but our volume scope is only displaying the first level of our voxelized space. So if I go down here in our volume scope to display visible levels, if I put that to 10, you'll have a little think. And you can see now, if I zoom out, this whole world around it is being voxelized. And the further away it's from the emitter, the larger the voxelized area is. And when you sort of hit simulation, it starts, if I hit play, you'll see it, it will start redefining these voxels and levels of detail as it uh, simulates. So you can see we're starting to get more detail in here. And it does all this on the fly. So you're only getting the detail you need around the uh, areas of the emission. And then these ones are re-voxelized as the fluid goes through it. Um, things like Maya fluids from before just used to voxelize the whole area at that sort of level. Um, they did do a sort of interactive one, but it never really worked. Anyway, so this is what happens. So we're voxelizing all these voxels all have this data in and you can see you can get very quickly lots of data. Um, so we can control the size of these voxels and how much detail and how big they are. So if I just rewind that. I stopped it. If it doesn't stop when you hit play, if you hit escape, you might have to do it a couple of times sometimes, but it will stop your simulation. Uh, so I rewind that. I'm just going to take this back to one level again. And let's have a look at how we can control this resolution. So under our source air, we have a res res resolution area. Um, 
and we have two modes. We have relative and absolute. Relative means the detail size is going to be relative to the size of our emitter. Uh, this can be handy if you're sort of setting up a generic simulation and you might bring it into another scene with geometry a lot larger. Um, and then it will keep the resolution the same in relation to the size of the object. Um, absolute keeps it, sets the resolution sizes in relation to the world space. Um, generally, this is the one I use the most. Um, so you can see already that those went a lot smaller. Um, so we have after that the geo detail size, and this is the size of the voxels around the emitter for the emission. Um, and if you make these smaller, you might see a slight change. Maybe, maybe not much. Yep, a little bit there. Um, and that's these are our velocity vectors that are being shown here. Let me just turn those off. Um, display flow lines. There we go. Let's get rid of that. There we go. So let's go back to my air source. Um, so that will change. So if you have a very detailed geometry, you can sort of make it a bit closer to the surface. Um, if you don't, you can have this quite high, not massively high, but you know it can be slightly higher than your actual detail size. Um, the next thing is whether your volume is a solid or a shell, like a plane. So this is a closed volume. This is a shell, uh, like you know something that's not closed, like a plane or something like that. Um, Mine's a solid, so I'm going to leave that a solid. Offset lets you offset the uh, the emission from the surface, so you can take it in a bit or out a bit if you change that. Can we see that if I do this? Can we get any sort of feedback? Yep, so you can see we've offset it that, so it's moved it all out. And if I went minus 0 0.25 should sort of make it a bit tighter and bring it in because we're actually emitting from slightly inside the volume. Um, and then our important one is this fluid detail size. And this is where the resolution of these boxes is controlled. Um, so if I make that one, these are gonna get smaller and more detailed. Just gonna think about it. And there we go. So they're really sort of getting detailed in there. And if you remember that this square here is considered as a meter squared by the simulation. So you can see we're probably down to about maybe five centimeters or something like that per, if these are a hundred centimeters, might even be 10 centimeters. Um, but you know, this, I don't think this is exactly relatable to these, but you can see this is a sort of size you're getting in relation to a meter of detail. So um, if you were doing a simulation to a cup, this number would have to be a, a bit smaller, otherwise I think it would look a lot quite chunky. Um, but at the moment we can leave that at 0.5 um, and maybe change that later on. So and if I hit play, we can see it going up. So this is a thing to take in consideration in relation to um, the detail of your sim. Um, and with that said, there's another thing we need to sort of just make sure we've got working correctly. If I just hit stop on this, hit escape. I rewind it. And if I reshow my floor collider. So, in relation to our floor and our collision objects, they also have a um, volume collider property, a resolution mode. And their default is also relative to the size of the object, but they also have an absolute one. And they also have a solid or a shell. So this is a shell because it's a plane. But if I, if we just cash out a couple of frames as it stands, you can see, Let's stop. Stop it. Stop. Actually, let me just go back and rewind. Do that again. Right. If I just go forward one frame, 
you can see actually it's not emitting from half of this emitter and that's because the resolution mode of our collider is set to relative um, and it's got a solid geo mode as well so actually the it, this is actually where this fluid is colliding with this floor um, so it's obviously way too high so if I change this now back to go to absolute and change that to shell let's just tick forward again and see what happens and there you can see now we're emitting from the whole um, object and the collider also has its own detail size property which you can make smaller to get closer collisions um, it will increase your simulation times if you have very small numbers here um, but if you are getting quite a lot of distance between a collision this is where you control that and changing this to absolute um, I would I generally do that by default for everything um, so if we hit play through one frame now you can see we're getting a bit more round there it's colliding a bit closer um, so this is why these are all important They're the detail of your sim and also getting your collisions to get closer to each other not having a large gap so in the next video I'll start tweaking this and trying to make it a bit more exciting